Hi, I'm Quixi Sontag and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the equipment that we use to restrain and control dogs. So the very first thing you need to know about is collars, neck collars. Um, my dog George over here, who is going to be assisting us when he feels like it, is wearing a flat collar. So it's just a nylon, dirty, muddy collar because he has a lot of fun. And the other dog that I'm going to be using to show you about equipment is called Scary Pony, but he's actually a dog with a bit of an identity crisis and he's also wearing a flat collar. So as you can see, both these collars have a, a sort of um, plastic clip that you can unclip and close again. And this one is to attach a lead. So. Most dog leads are also made out of nylon. It's the easiest one to use. And they have a metal clip that will attach somewhere on the dog collar. You get um, the more old fashioned flat collars that have buckles. So here you can see a normal buckle collar that you just adjust to the right size. And then this is the ring where you would attach the lead. Um, you get leads that are made out of chain, uh, metal chains. Um, you also get leather leads, but these nylon leads are generally the easiest and the most comfortable for both the handler and the dog. Back to neck collars. So when you use this kind of flat collar, the only disadvantage of it is that it can slip off a dog's head. Even here with George, if you really try hard enough, you may be able to get it over his ears and off. Because you can see he's got a very narrow head. So while these collars are really comfortable for the dogs, they're not really safe when you need to be able to control a dog in a large environment. So what happened then is people discovered that they can use a slip collar and a slip collar will really control the dog. So you need to know how to do this. Watch carefully. You put the chain through its own ring so that you have this. Okay. Now, slip collars work because they go right around and I'm going to put it over Scary Pony's head to show you how it works and take that one off for now. And the reason they work is because when you pull really tight, that dog can't get away. So it's very secure and very definitely this dog will stay under your control. But it is very bad for the dog's well-being because it hurts them and it chokes them. And it can actually cause quite serious damage to the dog's neck, trachea, etc. It can even cut off the blood flow to the brain and kill the dog. So when you use a slip collar like this, you've got to be very careful and you only use it if there's no other alternative to controlling the dog. Because the worst thing that can happen to you in practice is if you let your dog escape. If your patient runs out in the street, that's no patient for you anymore and your client's going to be very angry with you. So sometimes it's necessary for us to use a slip collar in practice. But it shouldn't be something that we use regularly in dogs and certainly not something that a dog should be wearing all day. You can imagine if a dog wears this at home and gets caught in a bush or in a fence or something, it can actually strangle and kill the dog. So it's actually quite dangerous to leave it on a dog that is just free outside. And because of the choking and the hurting, when you have a lead attached, we do not recommend it for dog training or for anything else. It's only when we have a difficult dog and no other way to keep it under our control that we will use it for a very short time period. When you do use it, make sure you use it the right way. Let me just quickly show you again. Here's our lead, uh, our collar. We don't try and do this to get it to work. We hold the bottom ring and just slip it through. And there we are. Now you can see it has the shape of a D. Okay, maybe a P, if you look at it that way. 
The way I want to put it on is I want the bottom end of the D or the P to go straight through the top of that ring over the dog's head and then I attach my lead on this side. Can you see where the lead is, where, where the ring goes below the chain part here? When I do this and the dog pulls against me and chokes the dog's neck, the moment the dog relaxes, this will also loosen. If, however, we have it the wrong way around with the ring at the top of the chain, so our P or our D is over here, then, and it's uh, instead of the straight part of it being over here, when we pull tight and the dog relaxes, it doesn't actually relax properly. So it can keep choking the dog. Okay, so once again, use it the right way, which is if I'm walking on this side of the dog, this way. If I'm walking on the other side of the dog, it will be that way. And only use it when you really have to and just for a very short time period. Okay, next step in the development of dog collars, the semi-slip collar. So this is actually really quite great because what we have here is we have a nice comfortable nylon collar which is adjustable and it has just a little bit of slip at the top. That means that when we put this on the dog and it fits properly, it has the advantage of comfort of your normal flat collar, but it also has a bit of an advantage of that ability to control the dog with that little bit of slip that we have there. So it won't slip off the head as easily as a normal flat collar does. So let's try it on George. Come on, George. Let's see if this is going to fit you. Okay, so now have a look over here, <laughs> George. Let's show them nicely. This one is actually too loose. This will still um, be able to come off his head. So we would have to adjust it and make it just a tad tighter so that it doesn't come off so easily. So you just need to do that. Come on, George. Boy, look how he is bowing down to greet me. That's a little bit better, okay? But it can still be tighter. And unfortunately, this one doesn't go a lot tighter than that. So that's the best we can fit. Can you see there? Now it's not pulling completely closed anymore. It's just a little bit of slip. That is how we want the semi-slip collar to fit, okay? It must always be just a little bit over there. Okay, I think that then concludes our little session on dog collars.